Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm going to give it a few, uh, another minute or two to make sure everyone is into the room. Thank you so much for joining us and, and spending the afternoon with us. I'll give it a, another second to make sure everyone's in the room. All right, it looks like we, everyone's in and we're good to go. Um, so welcome everyone to Mastering the Virtual Interview. This is a webinar hosted by the Corporate Partners Program at Drexel University's College of Computing and Informatics. My name is Chelsea Lowe. I'm the Program Coordinator for the Corporate Partners Program and I'll be moderating our discussion today with Vanguard. Before we get started and I introduce our special guest, I want to let you know a little bit about the Corporate Partners Program. If you're not familiar, our program connects corporations, startups, and nonprofits to Drexel CCI for the development, recruitment, and retention of top tech talent. We host meaningful engagements to connect students to our partners. These engagements vary from career networking events to guest lectures and tech talks like we're hosting here today. Today, I'm very excited to host Vanguard and our partner, Lucy Wagner. Lucy is the University and Recruiting Partnership Lead at Vanguard, and she'll be talking about some tips and techniques for the virtual interview. So Lucy, we will get started with you. Great, thank you so much, Chelsea. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for our virtual interview workshop. Um, again, just as Chelsea said, my name's Lucy Wagner. I work on our university recruiting and partnerships team at Vanguard. Um, so what that means, my job, I'm paired up with local universities in the Philadelphia area, um, where I go to find really great top talent for Vanguard's internships, entry-level roles, as well as our co-op program, which we exclusively exclusively do uh, through Drexel University. Um, so thank you all for joining us today. Um, before we get into the content, I just want to give everybody a brief overview of Vanguard, because I'm not sure how familiar everybody is with our firm. Um, so Vanguard, we are one of the largest financial services firms in the world. We are the leading provider of mutual funds, the second leading provider of exchange traded funds. Our main headquarters is right here in Malvern, Pennsylvania. Um, we also have two other sites in the US, one in Charlotte, North Carolina, and one in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, Vanguard, we were founded back in 1975 by Mr. John Bogle. And he really founded the company on passive long-term investment principles to keep costs low for our clients. Um, so John Bogle is really famous for creating the very first index fund. Um, and by creating that, later the media eventually coined a term called the Vanguard effect. Um, so that refers to Vanguard not only being, being able to keep costs low, for our own clients, but keeping costs low across the entirety of the financial services industry because, our because of our competitive prices and our index fund models and, and passive investing principles. Um, so that's a little bit of background on us. Currently, if we look forward to today at Vanguard, we have 19 offices globally in total. That equates to almost 17,000 employees, the majority of them being right here in PA at our headquarters in Malvern. Um, we serve over 20 million investors worldwide who are located in, in 170 countries. So we have a pretty expansive global footprint as a company. Um, oh, and I do want to apologize. I know I just jumped right into it, but um, we do have security precautions around Zoom, so I apologize to all of you listeners. I am unable to share my beautiful slides that I had prepared with you today, but the content is really the main takeaway, so please don't hesitate to ask me questions throughout this presentation to get that information that you're really craving from employers right now. Um, so a little bit more about Vanguard before I jump into the virtual interviewing. Something that really drew me to the company as an employee is Vanguard's mission statement and unique structure. Um, so Vanguard is very uniquely structured compared to all other financial services firms. With that, we are privately owned. What that means is if you're a client of Vanguard and you own our funds, you own Vanguard. So what Vanguard does is most companies model is they are set up to have external shareholders and then they have their clients. 
Vanguard has made that one in the same. And that's really powerful when we stem down and make business decisions because we're not thinking through, okay, how do we get our shareholders a profit and how do we do right by our clients? Because it's all really one in the same. Um, so that was really powerful in, in bringing me to the company as employees. It's somewhere where I can really feel good about working every day. Um, and that takes me to our mission statement at Vanguard, which is to take a stand for all investors, to treat them fairly, and to give them the best chance for investment success. Um, I know myself, uh, a few years ago when I joined Vanguard, being a recent graduate out of college, it was really important to me to find an employer with integrity and a place where I could feel good at work every day. And, and Vanguard really matched that with their mission statement. Um, so I encourage you all, as you do your research for employers for potential co-ops, internships, full-time opportunities, ask employers what their mission statement is and how they incorporate that into their day-to-day. Going back to Vanguard's unique structure, being privately owned by our clients, that not only allows us to talk the talk with our mission statement, but it allows us to walk the walk in our day to day because every decision we make truly is all about the client. Um, one last thing about Vanguard, I know we are one of the largest financial services firms out there, but we are just as much an IT firm as we are financial services at this point in time because it supports every aspect of the business that we're involved in. Um, and one third of our employees are currently actually IT support. All right, so just a, a quick few other tidbits I wanna hit on with Vanguard. Um, some of our employment opportunities, for freshmen and sophomores, we do something that's really interesting called Explore Day at Vanguard. Um, so that is a professional development day, which is exactly as it sounds. It gives you the opportunity to come um, explore the firm and, and meet some of our hiring manager, hiring managers, our recruiters, and people who have recently gone through our co-ops, internships, and full-time opportunities to which you all may um, be applying for soon. Um, so if you are in that freshman, sophomore, first or second year of your undergraduate career, career that's something to look into. Um, definitely keep in touch with me about our Explore Days because that's actually um, run through my team. Um, Lucy, for sophomores and... Sorry. Sorry, go ahead, Chelsea. Yeah. I forgot to mention, we did want to make this interactive. So we're going to be yep. taking questions throughout Lucy's presentation. And Lucy, we do have a fir the first question. Are you ready? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, so mm -hmm. uh, they just say, thank you for hosting. What's the difference between first and second round interview? They were mm -hmm. asked the same questions. They were asked the same questions in the first and second round interview? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, I'd say it, it's who it's with. So the, the first round, the way it's structured at Vanguard, we typically begin with a phone screen, and that'll be with an HR recruiter for your first screen. So usually it's over the phone um, or over video with that recruiting personnel in HR. Once, if, if they really like you, you're a good candidate for the role, they'll invite you in under normal circumstances to our headquarters in Malvern for an in-person interview with the actual hiring manager for that role. Um, so that's the difference. I know some of the questions can sometimes be similar from the recruiter to the hiring manager, um, but the main difference is really who it's with and who's evaluating the person um, and whether it's over the phone or, or, or that in-person interview. I will say right now in the environment we're in, um, we've been substituting those in-person interview opportunities with um, just virtual meetings um, internally at Vanguard, we utilize Microsoft Teams. If anybody's familiar with that, it's very similar to the way that, that Zoom works. Thanks. Yep. And then just a couple other opportunities I wanted to hit on, and we'll get back to the content of the virtual interviewing tips. But um, for sophomores, juniors, freshmen, of course, we have our co-op program. Um, this spring summer season, we actually had 26 students joining us for co-ops. 18 of those are in the IT side of what we do at Vanguard, and eight of them are more on the finance side of what we do. Um, so definitely keep your eyes out for that. Um, I know in, usually we're going for co-ops versus internships with Drexel, but we do have a great internship program as well. Um, that's called our College to Corporate Internship, and we really try to target juniors for that. Those postings will go up um, right at the beginning of June for the summer of 2021 start dates. 
Um, and then finally, if there's any um, upcoming graduates on the, on the call today, um, we have a plethora of full-time opportunities across all different aspects of Vanguard, whether it be IT, client-facing roles, leadership development programs. Um, so if anybody is graduating in 2021 and, and looking for a full-time opportunity, please don't hesitate to reach out to me after the call today. I know Chelsea will be sharing my email as well as my LinkedIn profile. Um, so any questions on Vanguard as a firm or what I do for the company before we move on to our, the bulk of our content? Haven't gotten any other questions yet, but you can continue. <laughs> All right, perfect. Um, so, so I really like to break down just tips for virtual interviewing in three steps. Um, so the, the first step I'll touch on is really nurturing your professional network, right? So, so that's really before you even get the interview, how are you nurturing your professional network and making those important connections so that you can land the interview with the firm of your choice? Um, one important way to do that right now, especially with the environment we're in, is LinkedIn. Um, I highly, highly recommend that if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, go on and create one. Um, it's as simple as uploading everything that's on your resume onto your LinkedIn profile and take a professional headshot with a neutral background and get it on there. But that's a really great way to begin engaging with employers, as well as to stay up to date on any virtual events that employers are doing. Um, I know LinkedIn actually recently did their own virtual career fair to help graduating seniors and juniors looking for internships find employers who are actually hiring right now. Um, so, so that's a really great way to start to build out that network and make those important connections for your next job opportunity. Um, second, as you lead up to that interview, writing the right resume is always important. Um, I won't spend too much time here because I know Steinbright really drills this into their students' heads and does such a great job with that. Um, but, but as far as writing the right resume, if you have one takeaway from today, um, I think technology is so great in that we can upload our resume to 100 employers in an hour and send off all these different job applications to feel good about. Um, but as a student, if you can take the extra five minutes to tailor your resume to that specific employer, that will go such a long way for you. Um, just as the internet's great and we can get things done very efficiently, it can also end up being a black hole for a lot of candidates. So I always recommend tailor your resume. Um, Specifically by that, I mean, as you read through a job posting, uh, if it's the employer that you've really got your heart set on, notice what language is used in that job posting. Are they saying um, they need uh, relationship management, great with people? Um, if so, that's something that you really want to emulate in your resume by using similar language to what's in that job posting. Psychologically for a recruiter, a lot of times they're the ones who are writing those job postings that you see on our websites. Um, so psychologically, as the recruiter is looking through your resume, if it has similar language to the job posting, that's sparking something in their brain brain saying, okay, this, this is the candidate, this is the student that I need to fill this role. Um, so that, that's, that's my main advice for the resume. Um, on top of that, can anybody guess how much time a recruiter um, spends at first glance looking at a resume? Feel free to type in the chat. So five minutes, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, 15 seconds, three seconds, five seconds, 11 seconds. Um, so you, you, you guys are close. Um, it's actually about seven seconds a recruiter will spend very first glance on that resume. So in that time that they're looking at your resume, the main things a recruiter is looking for is if you're eligible for the role. That's why it's that very short period of time. If you're eligible, they're going to spend that extra couple minutes to have read through the content, um, your job experience, and all your extracurricular experience. But in those first seven seconds, they're looking for GPA, your graduation year, and the major um, that you're in to see if you're eligible for the job that you're applying to. So my advice to students, make sure your education is big and bold right at the top of your resume and easy to find right at first glance as soon as you pick up that piece of paper. 
Um, so again, GPA, major, grad year, those are the first three things I look for as a recruiter when I meet a student out on campus, just to check that eligibility for the role. So any questions on resumes before we move into the interview portion? All right. All right, so some, some tips to, to, to really ace an interview, and I'm gonna take this from a virtual standpoint today. Um, so number one is just really setting the stage for the interview. Um, you want to make sure that you are taking virtual interviews just as seriously as you are an in-person interview. So by setting the stage, make sure you're dressing professionally head to toe. So you don't want that professional blazer tie on the top and then your pajama bottoms. Um, because if you think about it, if you move or shift or your um, video falls down and, and the hiring manager or recruiter sees your PJs from Christmas, underneath your blazer it's just not a good look um, on screen so definitely take it as seriously as that in-person interview do yourself a favor dress head to toe professional professionally for that hour that you have to be on screen um, along with that make sure that you are setting the stage by finding a quiet space to conduct the interview um, i know i have two dogs and a husband that i'm currently hiding from to conduct this presentation with all of you so try to find a quiet space with a neutral background as well and, and good light um, so that interview interviewer can see you um, and mainly that's also so you're not distracted. I, I know my dogs, they bark incessantly if our mailman comes to the door, if a package is dropped off. So um, just so you don't get those butterflies in your stomach if an unexpected loud noise happens, do yourself a favor, find that quiet space um, to conduct the interview. Um, I would say too, try not to get hung up if something unexpected happens. Um, you know, if a grandfather clock goes off or something like that, employers should be showing some grace right now in the environment that we're in and, and understanding that we're all doing our best working remotely right now. Um, but again, just, just try to find that quiet space. <clears throat> Along with, um, yep, go ahead. Are you okay taking them now? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so the first one, is some of the employers require assignment or testing during the in-person interview does Vanguard require something like that and how does that look in virtual interviews yeah it, it can depend on the particular job that you're applying for right so a lot of our client facing roles that's more relationship management oriented type of questioning that you'll go through we really focus on behavioral based questions for that um, you know really not any assignments D during the interview um, but again depending on the role you could potentially have a case study if that they I'm assuming they're just going to upload all the material and the reading that you need ahead of time um, so that you can go through that before you're you know you have to give your presentation in that interview setting um, along with that I know we have mainly IT folks on the call today. If you are in IT, we have you go through an assessment through HackerRank, if anyone's familiar with that. That's before you even get on the, the phone screen or the in-person or virtual interview. Um, so, so that's an assessment you take before you even get into your first interview. And that's just basic technical understanding so that we know what you're putting on your resume. If you're familiar with Java, that, um, that test will help us evaluate that. Did that answer the question? Yes. Um, and then the next question, is there a differ differentiation between majors or does the field of, I guess, IT or um, technology just matter? So I guess this might be more of a question of what type of majors are you looking for? Like, do you prefer um, software engineering or computer science? That's kind of how I'm interpreting the question. So Yeah, um, great question. Um, something I love about Vanguard is they really, really, truly value majors all across the board right um, so I, I not not an IT hire but I was hired into the finance side of what we do at Vanguard I was actually an exercise science physiology in my undergrad um, which is very much so healthcare focused I always say it's as far from finance as you can get um, Vanguard loves that and, and really values the diverse backgrounds and skill sets that come with those different majors 
on the IT side, of course, that technical knowledge is going to help you and is required for, for a number of our roles. Um, but I will say we have a great technology leadership program. That's a full-time two-year rotational program that you apply to um, as a graduating senior. That program, one of my close colleagues who works with me at recruiting events, he was actually an aerospace engineer at Penn State and was hired for that program. But he had learned some languages like Java, Python on his own time outside of his coursework. Um, so more of the programming knowledge, I say, is the main component um, that we really drive home on that. But we hire all different majors, engineers um, for those types of programs. And then the next question is around what is the dress code or what is appropriate for work attire? And I guess the follow up to that would be what attire or dress are you expecting for virtual interviews? Yeah, um, so I'd say Vanguard prior to 2020, we were pretty conservative in our dress. A lot of people wore a suit and tie every day or just very professional um, workwear. To the office but in February this year it was actually announced that we could now wear jeans to work if we were going in person so I know that only lasted about a month or so until we were put in quarantine but I definitely enjoyed that as it lasted so that new policy that was launched this year it's really just dress for your day um, you know if, if you're gonna be in front of some executive managers giving a presentation you may want to dress up that day and wear a suit and tie um, versus you know if, if you're gonna be at your desk all day programming or working on a project that's probably a dress down a, a jeans and a shirt day um, as far as virtually um, right now um, obviously I'm on screen giving a presentation I'm wearing more professional dress today than maybe I would again if I don't have anyone seeing me in a day and I'm just working on projects at home, that might be a sweatpants day because I don't have anybody's physical eyes on me. So it's really dress for your day, I'd say, from that virtual aspect. Um, you know, be mindful if you're going to be in front of senior leaders or managers that that's a day when you probably want to dress more professional. And just to be mindful of time, I do want to get back to kind of the bulk of your virtual interviewing tips. So we're going to hold questions. Um, and then if we don't get to them, I'll definitely share Lucy's information after this. So yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Chelsea. And these are all great tips. It's, it's information I, I would have touched on anyway. So keep the questions coming. Um, but we talked about setting the stage. So once you have that quiet space, where you're, gonna, where you're gonna be conducting the interview, it comes down to that interview itself. Um, myself and my manager actually teamed up and conducted an interview a few weeks ago, fully virtually. Um, and afterwards we debriefed and my manager said to me, did you notice how much the candidate was shifting and fidgeting? And at one point he turned around and tossed his water bottle in the trash can and completely turned his back to us. Um, so that was a real trigger for disengagement from that candidate as he was speaking to us and answering our questions. So that's something I would be very mindful of is your facial expressions and your body language because you're still on screen and the employer can still see you. Um, so if you're worried about having a nervous tick, your eye contact, I would definitely recommend Try filming yourself ahead of time, answering some mock interview questions, just to see if you, you know, you constantly twirl your hair or you click your pen or something like that. Um, I know it's painful to, to watch ourselves and, and hear our own voices on camera, but that can really help you refine some of your interviewing tools and your body language um, when you are on that virtual interview. Um, <clears throat> Saw another question come through, but I'll keep moving. Um, and then something else, as you finish the interview, I know you know you probably have that person's email address, um, possibly phone number because they scheduled everything virtually, but it's still really great to follow up and thank that person, number one, for the interview, as well as just make sure you have the right best form of contact that they prefer, if they prefer LinkedIn or um, email to continue your relationship moving forward. Um, so don't forget to ask for the best form of communication and, and thoroughly thank the employer for their time in a follow-up email once you get off that virtual interview. So very much similar practices that, that you would utilize when you are in person as well. Um, so I'll pause there. Are there any other questions around that? 
So we don't have questions specifically about that. Uh, we do have a couple just around the rotational program and summer internship. So um, if you want to just, I guess, talk about how, um, what requirements for the rotational program. Mm -hmm. And the other question is just, is the two-year rotational program open for June 2020 graduate students? Um, yeah. Can students still apply for 2020 internships? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so, so I'll start with that one. Vanguard, we do the bulk of our hiring every season in the fall, right? Uh, as do a lot of competitive firms. So for our 2020 internships, as well as full time right now, we are currently full for the rotational program I spoke to as well as the internship program. Um, with that, that's not something that's new because of the environment we're in with coronavirus. That's very typical for Vanguard to be full um, sometime in the spring, February or March for, for those full-time and internship roles because we hire in, in such an early recruiting season. Um, I will say for any juniors and seniors upcoming in 2021, our postings for 2021 go up almost a full year before you would start. So those are coming um, around June 1st, 2021, the postings for the internship program, as well as full-time will be going up then. That's the best time to apply in the summer before fall semester, because as soon as those job postings go up, Vanguard starts recruiting and interviewing students. So I highly recommend if you are interested in Vanguard's programs, our rotational program, internship program, apply early this summer um, or by September, because come October, November, December, a lot of those slots have been filled. And then we did have some um, advanced questions submitted in. One was what tools or um, what tools would be helpful in researching companies? So learning a little bit more about them before you interview. Yeah, um, I know personally for me, when I was researching Vanguard and other employers, um, their website is very telling. Um, if you can easily find their mission statement and, and ways that they enact that in their day-to-day -day work, that tells you a lot about the company. Um, Vanguard stood out because they had a ton of community stewardship on their homepage and how they value their clients as well as their employees. Um, along with that, diversity and inclusion is something that's really important to me as well as Vanguard, my current employer. So, you know, I looked for people who looked different when I went to their website and not just the same profile, especially with financial services. A lot of times you may see that on the homepage of their website. So number one, definitely that employer's website. For Vanguard, that's our main portal we use when you go to apply. Um, you know, we post everything through Handshake and Dragon Jobs, but um, it'll jog you over to our website when you formally apply. So that's where you can get the bulk of your information for employers. Along with that is LinkedIn. Um, I encourage you guys to follow me if you want to keep tabs on Vanguard. I'll post a lot about what we're doing, any events that are upcoming. So LinkedIn's another great resource to go on and follow Vanguard or other potential employers, as well as the recruiters that you've made contact with at job fairs or, or virtual events like today. And then the other question was just, what has Vanguard's response to COVID-19 been regarding hiring, but also supporting employees? Yeah, so so for us, um, as I touched to a little bit, you know, typically our our roles for seniors are full this time of year as it is, as well as those internship programs. So for us, it's really business as usual. Um, I think the, the first week of quarantine where, was where most employers really had to pivot and strategize how they're gonna push forward through this. Um, so I'm proud to say Vanguard had 95% of our crew members working from home that very, um, that very first day that Governor Wolf announced that quarantine announcement. Um, after that, some of the critical roles that were happening at Vanguard, we were able to shift those to a virtual experience that following week. So the majority of our crew members are all safely working from home right now, which I'm really proud of. Um, something else we do at Vanguard, a big perk for our employees is called partnership. Um, so partnership is a bonus that's given to every single employee at the firm, um, regardless of your level or your performance. It's based on the company's performance as a whole over the past three years. So for Vanguard, usually that pays out to all of our employees in June. 
Um, our CEO actually announced at the beginning of April that we would get it early this year just to help aid if any family members had lost their jobs or if employees were really struggling um, monetarily. So we all received our bonuses a few months earlier and received them on April 9th this year. So that was a really big win for Vanguard and help for a lot of our employees. Um, we've extended our sick days as well as leave for anybody who is a parent and, and needs to have childcare at home. Um, so we've done a lot just to make life a little bit easier for, for all of us being in quarantine and being home with our loved ones. Um, along with that, um, I know right now, we don't really have opportunities available at that internship and full-time level, but we did have about 200 roles that we're still actively hiring for on Vanguard's website. Those are more mid to senior level roles. So I'm happy to say, you know, we're still moving forward with our hiring process and have been really successful in onboarding folks virtually. Um, as well as our internship program for the summer 2020, we've decided to shift those students to a completely virtual experience over those 10 weeks where they would normally come to our offices. Um, so a lot of big wins for us just as far as giving back to our employees and, and continuing to, to bring on new hires to the company. Well, I know we're at time, but Lucy, yeah. if you could stay on for a few more minutes, um, yeah. if anyone has any more virtual interviewing questions, please feel free to put them in the chat now. Sure, and, and as you guys get those questions in there just one additional tip i'll give you two questions that you always want to be prepared for right off the bat whether in person or a virtual interview are what do you know about the company and why do you want to work there so make sure you are doing really thorough research before you enter that interview so you can have really strong answers to the, those two questions right off the bat um, they are typically asked right at the beginning of the interview, and if you feel like you struggled there, it might just make you feel a little bit less confident as you continue with the interview. So always have good answers to why you want to work at that firm and what you know about the company. And while if you all are still thinking, I just want to let you know about an upcoming event that we have for the Corporate Partners Program. I'm just going to share my screen with you all very quickly. Sorry about that. Um, so we have our, the next event that we have is our career networking event. And that is going to be on May 13th. So this event is exclusive for Drexel CCI students. And you'll be receiving more information about that. Yes, here's the, the event graphic for that. So that's gonna be Wednesday, May 13th from 4 to 7 p.m. So this is an opportunity to virtually network. So you're gonna be able, students, Drexel CCI students will be able to schedule or um, reach out to some of our corporate partners to do video chats. You'll be able to share your resume, connect with them on LinkedIn. Um, so it's, we're, we're pivoting to virtual um, and we're excited to have this career networking event. Lucy and Vanguard will be there and some of our other partners as well, so wanted to mention that to you and you all will receive more information about this event as well. And I see we do have another question in the chat. So what are employers looking for when they ask for your greatest strengths and weaknesses? Honestly, what, what are, what's a good answer for that? Yeah, I, I, I love that question because I think a lot of times when we're all asked that question, we feel like a politician trying to come up with weaknesses that are actually strengths and they're not really weaknesses. Um, so my advice, definitely be honest. Um, you want to speak to true weaknesses that you have as an individual. Of course, you don't want them to be so de detrimental <laughs> that, that you're not offered the job. But when you're speaking to those weaknesses, um, you know, let's say it's something like, you know, you're not as good at delegating work as you'd like to be as an individual. Try to try to think of some things that you've already done to grow that weakness or, or professionally develop yourself to get over that hump. Um, so that would be my best advice. You definitely want to speak to real weaknesses that you have, but follow it up by, um, you know, maybe I'm not as knowledgeable in Java. I haven't learned that in my classes yet, but I've taken initiative and I, I got a book or I took an online course on my own time to help develop that knowledge. Um, so I think it's just really important to demonstrate to the employer, number one, you have a desire for continued learning. Um, and growth as an individual. And number two, you have that ability to, to be self-aware of that and, and self-teach those habits away a little bit. 
Um, and then this seems like a good question to end on. What is your advice, just general advice for students graduating during this time of quarantine and searching for jobs? Yeah, I, I think that's a great question. And it's definitely one I've received from a lot of our graduating seniors, as well as students who have had um, internships canceled or things like that. My best advice, if, if you're unable to find employment for this summer, whether full-time or internship, use the time wisely to professionally develop yourself. Um, so that's what, that's what I think is really gonna set students apart. Let's say there's a big job surge after all this is over in the fall or winter, whenever things can go back to normal, who knows? But once, once that hiring um, is back rapidly for, for these recent graduates, to stand apart, you're gonna to wanna to demonstrate that you spent your time wisely and professionally developed yourself. So I know at Vanguard, we use lynda.com a lot. There's a ton of different courses. I know I have a desire for leadership one day, so I've taken a number of their leadership courses. It's free for us at Vanguard. I don't know if it would be free for you as a Drexel student, but a really great resource that just has so many different classes that you can take on it. Um, along with that, Vanguard offers those explore days for students to come to our campus. Maybe see if that's something that employers are offering. Can you go for a one day externship um, or, or do some you know, side projects for some type of employer just to get experience in your field? So any type of, of development or self-teaching that you can do over the summer, even if you're not formally employed, I think that will help you very much so stand out once we see that resurge in, in job opportunities. And I, I do believe um, LinkedIn Learning, which may be yeah. um, previously lynda.com, has some deals where they're offering their services for free for this time. So that's definitely something to look into. I want to thank you so much, Lucy, for spending some time with, with us and, and sharing all these tips and being a resource to our community. Um, really appreciate Vanguard and, and your continued partnership with us. Yeah, thank you so much, Chelsea, and thank you everyone for tuning in today. That half hour goes really quick. I could talk about this topic for hours, so I really encourage you all. Chelsea's gonna send out my email as well as my LinkedIn profile to you all at the conclusion of this event. Please feel free to reach out to me if you wanna continue to talk through interview tips, go through a mock interview with me, have me look over your resume. I'm more than happy to do those things and continue the conversation. Um, so thank you all. Stay healthy and safe. And I wish you the best for anybody graduating or pursuing a career this summer. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah. Thank you all. Have a good day. Take care. Bye.